Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey, uh, and hopefully uh, I won't make it too complex. And th there's a couple of hoops we have to jump through, uh, and there's a lot of information I'm about to unload on you. So, um, so we'll get into this. Um, you know, the way I see it, that there, there's a dilemma, uh, and which is the reason why Paula is having me speak to you guys. And that dilemma is that the consumer goes and buys a diamond engagement ring, right? And uh, then goes to an appraiser and has, has them appraise the ring. Uh, and then they submit that appraisal to an insurance company who then goes through you guys, the underwriters, who has to you know, interpret uh, this report uh, and to make sure that it, that's accurate. But the dilemma is that you guys are appraisers and you haven't done years and years of studying gemology and appraisal science and all of this. And so there's this, you know, this void, this discrepancy, uh, and all of that seems to be changing a little bit now. And the reason it's changing is because of the internet. It's changing because now the consumer can go online and learn about how to buy diamonds, how quality relates to value. They can educate themselves on, well, what's a qualified appraiser and what's, who, you know, and who isn't a qualified appraiser. Uh, and so, uh, so the, not only is the consumer becoming, becoming more educated, uh, but also the, the different demographics that you can purchase jewelry in are changing with, uh, you know, diamond vendors like Blue Nile that sell diamonds on a large volume. They can sell diamonds right at cost. So all of this is now shifting where the insurance companies are, uh, you know, becoming aware of this and wanting their underwriters to become more educated so that the, that not only that the reports that are being submitted are, are inflated in quality attributes and in value, but a little bit more accurate so that there isn't a conflict with the, with the, the consumer and your guy's client in the insurance company and people aren't being overcompensated or paying too high of a premium to keep out of uh, insured, right? So let's get into this. Um, and this brings us to this, a stand, uh, uh, understanding the appraisal process, uh, how to identify a valid jewelry appraisal report. Um, and so I'll get into a little bit about my credentials. Uh, I'm Patrick Davis, and, I, and as Paulo said, I've been an appraiser for about 20 years, uh, and I'm a, initially I'm a graduate from the Gemological Institute of America, GIA, and you've probably heard of that. Um, but outside of that, I'm also accredited with the American Society of Appraisers, and we're going to talk about credentials and what all this means, and I'm just going to rattle off some stuff. I'm also uh, one of a handful of what are called master gemologist appraisers in the United States. As far as my business, uh, I own a business called Gem Secure Jewelry Appraisals that caters to the general public. I do appraise independently for uh, a number of different uh, jewelry stores over on the west side, but ultimately my client is the general public that is finding me through the internet. Uh, and uh, is coming to me for one of two reasons. My licenses and my credentials, but also what's key here, and we'll get more into, is that I'm completely unbiased. I don't engage in buying and selling, uh, and so people come to me for that unbiased opinion of value. Uh, because there is, in my opinion, there is a conflict with appraisers that engage in buying and selling, i.e. the jewelry store appraiser, versus the appraiser that that's all they do is appraise. That's an advocate to the consumer, right, that buys jewelry. Um, so, here we go, you guys ready? Yeah. What is a jewelry appraiser? Well, he's one who examines, tests, identifies, evaluates, interprets, and researches jewelry arriving, arriving at an estimate of value. That makes sense, right? So the appraiser is measuring, calculating, documenting, formulating, right? Uh, and then based on that evaluation is coming to a value conclusion. The appraiser should be a skilled professional with ex expertise in both the subject matter being appraised as well as a thorough training in valuation science and experience with the marketplace. I'll talk more about what that means uh, as we proceed. Experience with the marketplace for the item in question. That makes sense, yes? Yes. Okay, so uh, definition of an appraisal. Now this is a, a kind of a broad definition. This would be, let's say, personal property. So we're not just talking gems and jewelry. But an appraisal is an opinion of value for a particular market. Again, I'm going to talk about what that means. On a particular date, 
It is usually in document form, so the written hard copy appraisal report, describing all qualitative and quantitative, quantitative attributes necessary to arrive at the value conclusion. So that document should be comprehensive in its descriptions and its quality information that supports the value conclusion. Okay. Um, so moving on, and if any of you guys have any questions along the way, just raise your hand. I'm happy to answer. What is required to become a certified jewelry appraiser? Well, unfortunately, there is no official requirement. There's no you know, laws or mandates that say, this is what an appraiser has to be. So anyone can hang a shingle and call themselves an appraiser. You could, you know, anybody can. Um, you could say, you could make up some name and say you went to the Kansas City, you know, gemological school. You could hi hang a shingle, you could make some pretty uh, templates for your appraisal reports and then you can start appraising people's jewelry. Um, and therein lies part of this dilemma of, you know, what qualifies an appraiser to be an appraiser, what is an accurate report, you know, and, and you as underwriters, when, you, when a report comes across your desk, how do you know that the value is accurate? How do you know that the quality attributes are listed? How do you know the appraiser was qualified? Right, you're just looking at this report and there's this misconception, perception that, that, you know, if it's done by an appraiser, then it must be accurate. But there are good cops and bad cops, there are good doctors and bad doctors, and there are good appraisers and there are bad appraisers. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna look at all of that. So uh, I, I, what I would like to say here is what should be required to become a certified jewelry appraiser. Well, that appraiser should first be a graduate from the Gemological Institute of America. So everyone's heard of GIA, yeah? So what is GIA? The Gemological Institute of America is the main institute for the study of gemology. It's the prestigious study uh, institute for the study of gemology where people come from all over the world to study the science of gemology. Now, what? Uh, however, what most people are not aware of is that just holding that credential, and this is kind of, this is the consensus with uh, still 95% of uh, of insurance companies is just having that credential does not uh, qualify someone to appraise jewelry. When you go to the Gemological Student Institute of America and you study, study gemology, all that qualifies you to do is to identify and grade gemstones. So when you graduate from that institute, through a process, a, a gemological process, you can say, you cannot say this is a this is a ruby. It's not a garnet. This is a ruby, and it's not a synthetic ruby. This is a ruby. This is a natural ruby. So you've identified what that stone is. You are trained to identify gemstones, and then you're also trained to quality rank that gemstone, to grade that gemstone. So you could say, well, this is a ruby of high quality because, right? But it doesn't train you to then take that information and assign value based on those quality attributes. It doesn't train you to prepare an appraisal report that's specific to an intended use that supports its value conclusion. Okay, and that therein lies another piece of this puzzle, which is the dilemma for you guys, right? Just because it says it's a graduate gemologist doesn't mean that that report is accurate, doesn't mean that, uh, that the value is uh, is a reasonable amount supported by the quality attributes. You want that appraiser to have additional education in appraisal science. So outside of this credential, you know, I did years of studying appraisal science. So what do those credentials look like? Well, the appraiser should be accredited with one of the major appraisal societies. And the American Society of Appraisers, ASA, is the most prestigious to the field of appraisals. And the reason that is is because uh, the ASA credential, or the, the appraiser who's accredited with ASA, has to do continuing education. They have to re-accredit every five years, right? So they have to continue their education uh, and keep up with the ever-changing world of gemology, right? Uh, and they have to uh, re-accredit every five years with that organization. They have to do ethics exams. They have to, uh, uh, in order to be accredited with this organization, they have to keep up with the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, which I'll get more into later. Uh, so ASA, uh, as GI is to gemology, ASA is to the appraisal field. 
There's other, there's other uh, accrediting agencies. There's the National Association of Jewelry Appraisers, right? Uh, uh, the American Gem Society is reputable, and then there's that title of the uh, Master Gemologist Appraiser, which is very difficult to come by in the appraisal field. There's only a handful in the United States, which I am. Uh, all right, uh, I'm going to get more into the, the use path, uh, the uniform standards of professional appraisal practice and what that means as far as the appraiser being up to date. Let's move on. All right, a little bit how to identify those credentials. So you get this appraisal report, you see someone's name signed at the bottom, and you see these letters at the, uh, you know, at the end of their name. How does that look and what, how to identify them? So. Graduate gem uh, gemologist from the uh, Gemological Institute of America, GIA. You know, not only does it cost thousands of dollars to go to that institute like any university, uh, so they're going to be proud to put their credentials at the end of their name. Patrick Davis, GG, graduate gemologist. Uh, accredited senior appraiser from the American Society of Appraisers is going to say ASA at the end of the person's name. Master gemologist appraiser, right, MGA, National Association of Jewelry Appraisers. They also might just sign their with that master gemologist appraiser at the end there. Uh, what type of jewelry I might need to be appraised? Well, pretty straightforward, right? Diamond engagement rings, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, right? Um, jewelry items valued over two to three thousand dollars. So, uh, you know, insurance companies might give different um, suggestions to their clients, but uh, when, when people come to me, um, because I'm unbiased, certainly I can make a lot more money appraising all your jewelry, even your $500 little pin. But what I tell people is that is for insurance scheduling specifically, actually, yeah, specifically for insurance scheduling, to do items that are valued over two to $3,000 that you're out in the world wearing on a regular basis. And maybe the insurance company doesn't like me to say this, but uh, that maybe you put them in a safety deposit box, right? Uh, and so you're not paying the premium on that, right? Uh, people get appraisals for many different reasons. So people come to me for a variety of different reasons to get items appraised. Certainly for you guys, you guys are doing it for insurance scheduling, right? So the, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because the, uh, what the report is being used for, and we'll get more into this, affects the market level that we look at. But these are some of the reasons that people would get appraisal reports for. Certainly insurance scheduling would be the number one uh, reason or intended use of an appraisal report, but uh, if uh, if a family member uh, dies and you're the executor of the estate, then uh, you would do it for estate purposes. If you were, had a ring that you wanted uh, to, to liquidate, then you'd be doing it for resale advice. So we have these different uses. If you got a divorce and you were fighting over the estate, then it would be dissolution marriage. If uh, you came to me and we found out you got ripped off, then we'd be preparing a report as a dispute, maybe be going to court with that report. Tax liability, which is pretty much the same as estate purposes, and then collateral for a low. I don't like doing those. Because it's usually for sketchy purposes. Alright. So that's kind of the overview. Uh, and now we're uh, gonna look at how uh, the value of a jewelry item is determined. So how does the appraiser come to a value conclusion? Um, and this is a little bit more involved, so bear with me, and we're going to kind of walk through this first part of, of how this is done, and then we're going to come back to it, because there's a part in the middle here that I have to go back to. Uh, but uh, So we're talking about the appraisal process, uh, and this process is the process that I go through when a client is in my office, right? And the first part would be the evaluation. Uh, and I would call it the, the gemological profile, the, gab, the gathering of relevant gemological information. So it looks something like this. Client comes into my office, they have a diamond engagement ring. Uh, the format that I do it is that they sit directly across from me and we sit down. And while they watch, the evaluation is the measuring, the calculating, the documenting, the formulating, the photographing, the testing, the weighing, which is done right then and there, right? The relevant gemological information, right? So we're testing and identifying metals, we're identifying gemstones, we're measuring and weighing jewelry, and then we're grading diamonds, we're quality ranking gemstones, ruby, good ruby, not so good ruby, diamond, and we're gonna get more into how that's done. Photography, note taking, right? And then 
So that's the evaluation. And then the second part is the valuation. So, right, coming to a value conclusion. Taking that information and then assigning value, right? And that process is what's called applying the cost approach to estimate value. I'm going to come back to this, but I, want to, I, I need to set it up this way, uh, uh, and then we're going to come back to this. So uh, the cost approach is, it uses the principle of cost forecasting, which is the, the summation of, of expenses to recreate a similar item. So in a nutshell, if you imagine you have a ring, right? It's a diamond ring. And if you took that ring and you unassembled it, you have the diamond here, you've got gold here, and you've got some diamond accents here. So the cost <coughs> approach looks at each individual part and adds up the wholesale component parts, right? Uh, and then from there, and I'm going to get come back to this as well, then what we're going to do is we're going to, if it's a diamond, then we're going to need to look in the marketplace and research what, what is called the per carat price for that particular quality of diamond. So just keep that in your mind's eye and we're going to come back to it. But before we come back to that, we do have to go through this. Da 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 da, da 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 da, right? So we need to do a quick overview. We need to do a crash course in how diamonds are graded and how colored stones are graded. And I'm going to go through this quickly because we don't have hours or years to do a gemology course. Uh, but let's let's get into this. So, and, and some of this information you guys might already know or be semi-aware of it. Uh, and